OpenAI just dropped their brand new AI agent workflow builder. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a quick look into the platform. We're gonna be having a look at some of the features and the products that OpenAI have just released with inside this workflow builder. And then we're also gonna be building your very first AI agent utilizing the platform. So without further ado, let's jump into a quick overview about what OpenAI have released and then let's jump into the visual workflow builder. Okay, so we can see right here that OpenAI have just released their brand new agent kit, which is essentially marketed as a platform to build, deploy, and optimize agent workflows using agent kit. So we can see right there, the main goal that they're trying to do is give us a platform to build, deploy, and optimize AI agents right here. So we can see the agent kit is a modular toolkit for building and deploying and optimizing AI agents. So build section right here. So we're able to create workflows with the agent builder, which is what I'll show you a little bit later in this video. Um, a visual canvas for starter templates. So very similar to N8N and make.com deploy. So using chat kit to embed your agent workflows in your front end. So again, use, utilizing code and different things to put it into your websites to be able to deploy these agents and then optimize, right? A platform to also build robust evals to observe and improve agent performance. So that's kind of how they're marketed this product. And obviously this introduces direct competition to um, no code workflow builders like N8N and make.com, right? Because this completely cuts out them and OpenAI has given us a separate platform to utilize their LLMs and all their different models um, and just build AI agents and workflows directly inside their platform. So again, that's kind of how they've marketed, right? And then they've also given us some quick notes on how to build an agent. So we can see right here, Goal, build an agent workflow, what to use, agent builder. Connect to LLMs, we can use the OpenAI model. So again, utilizing all their services and features um, and then adding it into that workflow builder. So that's kind of what the main overview that they've released, right? So now let's go ahead and jump into the agent builder and let's go ahead and test it out. So now coming into the agent builder platform, we can see right here, it is quite plain. We've got three main sections. We've got the workflows, which is all our workflows. We've got drafts and then we've also got some templates as well. So let's actually go ahead and dive into a template that OpenAI have given us and let's explore all of the different nodes, which is what I'm going to call it, um, that they've released. So let's go ahead and open this customer service node. So we can see right here down the left, this is all of our different nodes and different um, type of tools and nodes that we can deploy into the workflow. So if we click on that, we'll be able to add an agent node and then et cetera, right? Let's go ahead and quickly delete that. Um, so yeah, we've got a few core things right here. Number one is agent. This is going to be the main space to design our AI agent. If we click into this agent right here, we can see how OpenAI have set it up. So down the right hand side, this is where we'll be able to customize everything. We've got the name. So we can name these different agents and we'll be going through this example a little bit later after we've gone through all the tools, right? Instructions. So this is the section where we instruct our AI agent. This is going to be the prompting section for everything. Include chat history. So we're able to switch this on to have the agent include chat history to have memory to the agent basically okay so if we switch that on the agent will have memory and then from here we have the model so we can go ahead and customize the model of our ai agent for example we can select gbt5 we can select gbt5 pro we can select all of the different llms we have access to um and then of course are by open ai right that's the space where we can select it and of course we can have different LLMs attach different agents to um, for different processes. For example, if we want an agent with more reasoning, we might switch it to GBT5. Or if we want it to just do a simple classification task, we might have it to um, GBT4. So that's a good use case for switching those LLMs, right? Um, and then from here, we have an end node, pretty self-explanatory. It's just ending the conversation, um, of course, right there. So yeah, that kind of covers all of our core workflows and how we can have everything. And then we also have the tools as well. So the main use case that I've really found within this workflow builder is that we don't have a bunch of different connected tools, unlike N8N, where we can search Google Calendar, we can search Google Sheet. Um, we also have MCP servers. So MCP servers are called Mo Model Context Protocol Servers, which allows us to go ahead and attach tools to a certain server, which we can then call. That makes sense. So we can see right here, that's kind of the main use case for tools is attaching a bunch of tools inside an MCP rather than having a bunch of separate tools. That's kind of how they've done it, right? So we can see we can add in, you know, OpenAI connectors such as Gmail, Google Calendar, and then we can also have by OpenAI, which is Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, and then other developers as well, right? And then we can add servers. So we can also add different customizable servers or custom MCP servers that we can add to our AI agent toolkit, right? That's the main use case for these tools is that MCP server. 
Then we also have file search. So this is an inbuilt feature where we can upload files in here and it's going to embed it into kind of like a RAG system or a vector store database system. So it'll chunk it up and do all that type of things. Um, so yeah, we can attach files and that will be a direct integration with the tool as well. Um, and then we also have web search as well. So web search again is searching the web for information. That's another tool that has, has access to. And then we also have a code interpreter, which is just interpreting code. And then we can add a custom local function as well, um, which we won't really dive into. So yeah, that kind of covers all of the tools. File search we've covered, guardrails would, uh, sorry, we need to cover guardrails. We'll cover MCPs as well, right? And the last tool right here is guardrails. And this is a very important tool that they've added and a very important um, issue that they've also addressed in the AI space, which is introducing some um, guardrails to AI. And if we come ahead and click in here, we can see kind of how they've structured that. So for example, in this workflow, we can see it's starting, right? And then we can have a jailbreak guardrail to determine if the user's input is reasonable, right? So for example, if this agent maybe was in a medical service, right? And someone was passing credit card information or someone was passing, you know, medical information or their medical number or whatever, right? We can actually introduce a jailbreak guardrail and we can come into these settings and we can select the entities or we can select the personal identifier information, um, which will then detect any personal data and block it off before it reaches the model. So for example, if someone had a credit card number or if they were saying something with their, with their, with their card number, the AI would then detect that. And then if it fails, it will go down this path and it'll end, right? But if it passes, it'll then move on to the classification input. So that kind of covers the um, jailbreak and guardrail thing. And as we can see, we can customize all of this. We can customize person's name. Um, you know, you've got specific things for USA, UK, Australia right here. Um, but yeah, we can see that we have all of those different guardrails that we can introduce as well, right? Moderation, this will cover the moderation guardrail. So again, flagging any, you know, explicit content or anything that we highlight in here to the AI. Jailbreak, this introduces, a, a, you know, kind of like a, a safety protocol for any attempts to jailbreak the AI, such as prompt injection, role playing or system prompt overrides. Um, and then, of course, we can uh, adjust the confidence threshold and then model in there. Hallucination, detect and flag hallucinations by verifying claims against trusted documents in your vector store. So again, um, adding some, some safety limits around hallucination and making sure our agent does not hallucinate within the guardrails as well. So really, the main process of this is just classifying it. And then if it passes, it can move on. And then it, if it fails, it can come to the end, right? So that covers that guardrail. And then let's move on to the logic. So in this example, that OpenAI I've used and the template they've used, we can see if the um, user's input does pass that guardrail, it'll move on to this AI agent. And then from there, we can utilize a logic node. So for example, um, once we have identified that user's intent, it'll move on to a logic node. And then basically from there, it is an if else statement. So if this happens, then it'll move on to this agent, right? Or if this happens or else if, it'll move on to this agent. So for example, we can see if the user's um, intent was this, it'll then route to this specific agent, right? So we introduce logic to these AI agents inside this workflow. So that's basically what that logic um, node means, right? And then we can see how they've mapped it out in this um, example to then route to this agent, right? Um, and then from there, handle each customer intent in you know indifferently. So just to reiterate this workflow, it starts, it identifies the jailbreak, and then if it fails, it'll end, it'll go to this classification agent, and then it'll use that logic feature it has, and then it'll route it to the specific agent. And then from there, we can induce user approval. So does this work for you? We can pause for a human to improve or reject the step. And then from there, we can add some ends. So, right, so that really covers all the things. And then we also have some data nodes, right, down here. So we can see this can transform data. So for example, very much like NADN, we can take certain data like JSON formats, we can transfer it to text, we can transfer it to whatever we want, we can transfer it to objects as well, right? Set state, this is, I assume, the set variable type of thing. So we can have data and we can set it as variables to use later on to input, right? So that covers all of the features and hopefully you have a good understanding of how to customize um, really everything within here. So. Yeah, the main use cases and the main differences is those MCP tools. We're going to host all of our tools inside those MCP servers, which I'm really excited to try out. Um, and yeah, also those guardrails is very useful and a very good feature to, to kind of filter out any sensitive information, right? So now that we've understood all of the different kind of nodes and features in here, let's actually go ahead and come back out to the workflow and let's create a new agent from scratch, a very simple agent um, that I've just quickly designed and we can see how it works, right? So let's go ahead and create this agent. 
and then we'll add a start node right here which is going to start the input variable will be just text right here and then let's go ahead and customize this agent right let's name this a airbnb agent right instructions so we're going to need a little bit of instructions for this agent i've already gone ahead and built out a prompt for this video so i'm going to go ahead and paste this in right here right let's go ahead and open this up let's run through the prompt so essentially this prompt is just going to be an example or demo for this video this is going to be an airbnb agent that will essentially take in incoming inquiries it'll it's going to use a tool that we're going to be utilizing through OpenAI, um, and it's going to look for information inside that factor database and then it's just going to return that response format right so we can see um, again this role essentially is just telling OpenAI ai and the llm its role its goal its task how to conduct it and everything right so we can see um, I'm going to delete this knowledge base because I'm going to add it in as a file, right? So we can see this agent, all that it's doing is taking incoming inquiries, looking for that knowledge base tool um, and doing everything there, right? All right, so let's go ahead and click save. And then let's also add in a tool within here, right? So we can add in a tool. Let's add in a file search. And then from here, we need to drag files or upload them, right? I'm going to come up here. I've already prepared this knowledge base. Essentially, this knowledge base just looks a little bit like this, right? So again, this is ChatGPT generated, but you can see how we can upload data and text and information into a vector database. And what it's going to do is it's going to embed all of that right here. And we can just go ahead and attach that to the agent, right? And then from there, let's go ahead and just click end right here. We can attach an end node to there. So this is a very, very simple agent right here. And then we're going to need to preview. Now, if you are using this, you're going to need to have a verified organization to preview the agent. So let's go ahead and click publish up the top. Let's name it test agent, and then we'll just do Airbnb, right? So now what's going to happen is we're going to be able to test the agent and it's going to use that vector based store and we can see how it works, right? So let's go ahead and click preview and we can see. So let's do hello. What is the Wi-Fi password? And we can see that it's going to come in. It's going to start. You can see a good visual representation here. It's going to search for those files. You can see it's found the password right there. It's, con it's continuing to reasoning. It's crafted it. And then we can see that's its response, right? Let's also put what is the closest cafe, right? Let's see what it does now, right? So it's coming in. We can see the preview. So it's like N8N, right? It's showing how it's working. Um, I think it's a little bit more user friendly. There's a lot less, you know, nodes and everything in there, which is what I'm going to call them. Um, as we can see, it successfully went and searched for that database inside that inside that file right there. We can see, right? So yeah, that's just a quick overview of the OpenAI Builder platform. Hopefully, you have a good understanding of how all those nodes work and how everything works, and then a quick practical guide and overview on building kind of a quick, simple agent. Um, so yeah. Uh, without further ado, I'll see you in the next video.